All right, YouTube, how's it going? So today I wanted to do a size comparison uh, with this new GSM Cold Steel Mayhem. This is the special edition version with S35 VM blade steel serial number. And uh, it also has the black and red G10 handles. This features the Atlas lock. So first, before I get into the size comparison and just kind of my general thoughts on this blade, I wanna say that this is not my blade. Uh, this is actually on loan from uh, Jimmy Slash. And so go check out his channel. He does awesome videos. He, he shows you a lot with what's going on with Cold Steel, a lot of the new stuff. He has an awesome 3V chopper that just came out. And so I got to meet him, have dinner with him, arm wrestle him. Looking forward to getting to hang out with him in the future, maybe do some uh, video collaborations. That's the fun. first thing that's, uh, besides its size, I I'm used to huge blades because uh, I love Cold Steel's mega folders, is the Atlas Lock. And so the Atlas Lock is uh, very nice. It's very free flowing. Uh, it kind of has the functionality of the Shark Lock slash uh, the Axis Lock from, Cold, uh, from uh, Benchmade. And uh, I haven't done a whole lot of uh, impact testing with this particular knife, but Jimmy Slash, he is batoned with not this uh, particular blade, but with the Aus 10 version. And um, anyways, I, I'll probably roll in some of that footage as, as I speak, but uh, I'm impressed with uh, the performance. I do have a couple critiques with the design, uh, but overall, I like it. I think there's a couple downsides to it. Uh, with the design and also with the pricing, but um, I guess the first thing that I want to acknowledge is um, It's just very easy to function. This lock is very easy to function uh, a lot of women uh, When they get a hold of a triad lock They can't actually depress it down and close it open it up and close it and so uh, if you are a teenager if you are female and you just don't have the grip and hand strength and you want to get into mega folders, this um, Atlas lock is a really good thing to try out. Um, in my opinion, it's almost like too easy to uh, you know, disengage and all that. Make sure when you work with this knife that your fingers are absolutely out of the way so you don't get cut because a blade like this uh, it, it's a little bit over 13 inches. I mean, excuse me, 13 ounces. If that thing drop shuts on you, that finger, uh, it, it might be gone. So be very careful with a knife of this magnitude. Um, so, um, so I have three critiques with this knife. Obviously, it's going to function well. Uh, the first one is the pocket clip. So this is a six-inch blade. And not only is it a six inch blade, but it's also very wide and it's very heavy. And uh, honestly, I think they should have went with the Raja style pocket clip. You'll also see this Raja style pocket clip on the XL Espada. Uh, to me, this would have just uh, worked out a lot better than this um, standard uh, Cold Steel Voyager, uh, you know, uh, pocket clip. Now this pocket clip j does work. Okay, there it is in the pocket. Here's the deployment. All right, the pocket clip. I mean, you know, there's no problem with the pocket clip, but for just such a beastly knife, uh, I think the larger pocket clip would have just been a lot more fitting. Okay, so uh, my next critique with this knife is um, this design feature right here, which is a safety, uh, part of the safety of using this knife. If you wanted to drop shut this blade with your hand up here using the atlas lock that's not going to cut you right there okay and that's why they have that but if you notice so this i believe this is a gsm design i don't, I don't think demco had anything to do with this particular design um, if you notice all the demco designs you have um you don't have a finger choil but yet it's safe to drop shut and use. You just have just more bar stock, unsharpened bar stock that's gonna hit you right there and it's, it's very comfortable, all right? Uh, same thing with this towel war. Again, there's no real finger choil. It's just that bar stock and there we go. Same thing with the Raja, okay? All right, again, you can use this as a finger choil but 
there's no uh, wide like hook right here. And so I'm gonna get into that. Again, with the Aspada XL, there's no sort of hook. And uh, my problem with this is that you could have made a very safe drop shut design. So six inch blade, okay, that's very safe to close. Uh, you gotta be careful, but you can do it. Uh, and you could have like, just imagine if that hook wasn't right there and it was just all steel instead. I don't know why they did do that. I don't know if it's a function of this Atlas lock, but they chose to have this big cutout. It doesn't really feel good as far as a finger tool. I mean, you know, if you're cutting like paper, that's gonna be fine, but if you're really bearing down with wood, uh, that's not gonna be really all that comfortable. But um, the thing is, and you'll see this with my meat cut test, and I'll put those clips in, uh, if you strike and you kind of over strike it just slightly that is going to kind of catch it will slip and it will still cut but the fact is is that it does catch and so something like this if you happen to over strike a little bit it's just going to slip and cut okay there's not going to be any catch at all uh, same thing when I did my piercing I pierced all the way through the meat and it hooked on the clothing and when I pulled it cut itself out but the fact is is that it did hook and so it wasn't a very big deal with the testing, but you know, cold steel, they're all about martial arts. They're all about not just having a novelty knife, but actually something that will function as a actual weapon. And uh, my thing is, think about if you were to stab this thing all the way into a large torso, okay, a rib cage, okay. You think that's just gonna cut out super easily? I don't know, okay, I, I can't afford uh, pig carcasses. I can't afford uh, to do that sort of testing, but um, I think there is some wisdom with the Lintops and Demco designs with not having that large kind of hooking choil. Uh, you'll see this kind of choil on Spyderco Pier Militaries, uh, but think about this. When you look at a Spyderco Yojimbo, I'll put a picture right here, it doesn't have this, okay? In a Spyderco Yojimbo, it's going to be more design for that slash, you're not gonna get caught up in that sort of thing. So um, that is my biggest critique about this particular design. And lastly, um, when it comes to the price of this blade. So uh, this is the special limited edition with S35VN. It's numbered, they're not gonna make any more like this. Um, and so I kind of understand why the price is so high. Uh, back when this was in stock on Midway, you could get this for about $280 or so. Um, and I don't have too much complaint because, I mean, that's going to be more collector special edition. But if you also, if you go on Midway or Amazon, what you're going to see is that the Aust 10 version, uh, G10, uh, Atlas Lock, Aust 10, just the standard version, it's about $260, $280 on Amazon and that sort of thing. And in my opinion, that's just too pricey. I watched Gideon's Tactical, um, their review on this the other day, and they came up with the same critique, and I, I totally get it. So um, this is the Raja right here, six inch blade. This is a six inch blade, okay? Uh, depending on uh, the timing on Amazon, you can get this for about $71 to $100, okay? This is the Raja. Uh, I'll put in a picture just from a couple days ago. This is about, $280 on Amazon, okay? So it, just for my buck, my money, I cannot justify getting uh, this blade over this blade, okay? You're actually getting more cutting edge, all right? Uh, this is slightly heavier, but this Kukri, it's, it's very well uh, thought out. It's a proven design that Cold Steel has had for a long time and it's so economic and plus it also has the uh the thumb disc which draws out of your pocket i really wish that um, gsm would have used the thumb disc on this the thumb stud is just fine i just really like the uh, disc deployment because you can use it obviously as a thumb stud or you can use it like an emerson wave and this one works out very well uh, another thing too with the mayhem with the price comparison is um on Amazon, you can get a fully polished S35VN. Uh, it's the Lunum G10 Polished XL Spada for about 
$268. I'll put a, uh, a picture to show you the, the comparison. And this knife is um, $20 more, okay? And I don't know about you, but if you are into mega folders, uh, this one is a lot more capable for fighting and that sort of thing uh, as opposed to the Mayhem. The Mayhem's great. I like the design. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot better in person than uh, I saw on the computer. I'm very glad that I can review it. But again, just for my money, uh, I would choose the polished G10 handle spotted with S35N. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have one, but if you were to give me, you know, $280, okay? So enough to buy the Aust 10 version. And you laid both knives out beside me. Okay, and just pretend this is the Polish G10 handle. And you said, okay, Matt, which one do you want? I'm going for the XL Spada. And so those are my three main critiques. Uh, this hooking design right here, I could see that as a potential, um, you know, when it comes to actual combative use, tactical use. Um, let's see, the pocket clip, and then the price. Okay, but besides that, I think it's a pretty cool knife. It's a, a lot better than just seeing it uh, on the computer. I, I like it in person. So super wide. If you're into mega folders, um, maybe you don't want to buy one just yet, but if you can get a friend to show you one, super awesome. So this is going to be the last part of the video, and uh, I just wanted to do some size comparison. I weighed this thing in. It was probably 13.3 uh, ounces, somewhere in there. And so here it is. Upping it up against the uh, Vaquero Voyager. All right. So, uh, bigger blade, obviously. Okay. Here's another six inch blade. All right. And it appears that uh, they're going to have approximately the same amount of reach. Okay. Um, obviously, this has a lot more chopping potential, but this does cut pretty good. Uh, this stabs like no other in that liner lock. Uh, it's the only liner lock that I just absolutely trust with all my life. Um, so here's another interesting comparison. Uh, when my brother, he was handling this, he's like, man, this would make a really good kitchen knife. And he's right. Uh, here's another knife. If you got it in plain edge, it'd make a very good kitchen knife. Um, but I want to show you something real quick. Okay, check this out right here. The Tower actually has more cutting edge than the Mayhem. Okay, so the Mayhem has a longer blade. Okay, this is a five and a half inch blade. This is a six inch blade. But as far as cutting edge itself, the Tower actually beats it out just by a little bit. So that's something to note. Uh, this is going to be a lot lighter. This has the steel liners that are skeletonized, so it's a lot heavier. It's going to do more chopping and that sort of thing. Um, I have not. I've seen good testing with uh, the Atlas Lock. I know it's strong, but uh, I'm still a triad fanboy for right now. So, um, you know, between the two knives, I, I do like this design a bit better. Again, it has the uh, thumb stud and uh, the, the thumb disc, excuse me and it doesn't have that catch right there uh, that can get caught up in clothing and rib cages and that sort of thing. All right, so uh, this is the knife right here that I think it compares with the most. So uh, the Raja is actually gonna beat it out with the reach just by a little bit, okay? Uh, this is just a, like a 10th of an ounce heavier than the Raja. This has full steel liners, this has skeleton, skeletonized steel liners, but the blade, is so much wider than the Raja, but this thing can chop. Uh, this thing is a real workhorse. It's a pocket kukri and it lives up to its name. And so again, $71 to around $90 on Amazon, $280. This is G10, okay? This is Gervery, but honestly, I mean, I I'm just gonna have to like, just for my money, my preference, what I like, I would have to go with this one, okay? Uh, but again, uh, this, and, and that's the interesting thing is that uh, Jimmy Slash told me that they just sold out or they're very low in stock on Midway. And um, he told me like, you know, these really sold, which is great. I love that Cold Steel GSM is doing really good. But um, honestly, the Aust 10 version of this, I think is, uh, it's, it's 
too much money for what it is, all right? Cool boy, though, cool knife. So here's another comparison, okay? Obviously, the a spot is gonna have more reach, and um, the blade width is approximately the same. Okay, so very wide blade, um, and I really like the Espada. I, I don't think this is a novelty piece right here. Uh, Lynn Thompson, he's instructed me with a combative knife fighting, uh, with boobies, uh, kukris, uh, tomahawks, uh, and also the XL Espada. Um, and this is not a novelty knife. If um, Me and my brother, we spent a good many hours uh, with the Santa Prime rubber handled or the, the rubber blades and when you get something about the size of, size of this and you have someone else that has uh, one or two of these you are in a good spot okay because you can uh, deflect and parry and that sort of thing and and so that is one good thing about the mayhem it's so heavy duty that uh, the pivot seems strong the lock uh, for what I've seen online seems decently strong you can bully you can pin arms uh, you can um, use the knife like a paddle and um, what do I mean by that so this is my Laredo buoy love this Laredo buoy five stick five sixteenths of an inch thick so a lot of people when they think of edged weapons they think of the primary edge they think of the point and they think if it's a, a dagger or a nice buoy they think of the back cut as your, as your weapons, maybe even the pommel. But something they don't think about a lot is using the blade like a paddle to go right into someone's hand, their thumb, and that sort of thing. And with how heavy this blade is and how wide it is, you can actually perform that sort of um, uh, technique if you happen to find yourself in the worst situation possible. So uh, the last comparison, okay, so here it is against the Laredo buoy. Okay, and I want you to see this, is that actually this blade is wider, is wider than the Laredo buoy at its widest point. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you're getting a lot of heft with this. You're getting a lot of strength. You're getting a lot of cutting power and um, it can fold, you don't need a sheath. This is gonna be easier to conceal than the buoy. Uh, I still like the buoy better, but this is a great blade. And so um, this is an awesome thing. And I'm so happy that Jimmy Slash let me borrow this so I could do this comparison. So um, I'm gonna mail this off to Jimmy Slash or I might meet him in Conroe for an arm wrestling practice and uh, give this back to him. But uh, if you have any questions about the mayhem and what I think about it, just leave it in the comments and I'll be happy to uh, get with you. So um, y'all have a wonderful day and stay safe.